Unit 1, Part 2. This is the section of exercises you do following the practice session of wherever you are in the regimen. The expected result of this Unit 1, Part 2 is further lengthening of your spine, improved suppleness, and most importantly, integration of the changes you've produced in your practice session. You do part two of unit one to end each practice session. Return here to get the instruction and the part two exercises until you can do them from memory. The 10 to 20 minute walk is the best thing you can do to integrate these changes. But 10 to 20 minutes is a rule of thumb recommendation. Even five minutes will serve you and long walks will serve you even more. The two special walking exercises, the gyroscopic walk and the old Scottish geezer's walk, are counterparts to each other. In a way, they're the opposite patterns of movement to each other. Both integrate changes and each counteracts the pattern of the other so that you don't get stuck in a groove. And that leads to a more ordinary walking pattern. Some of the lessons are long, no getting around it. And in that case, to finish the lessons with the final movements of this section of unit one may run overly long for you. If you're doing your practice in the evening, as I recommend, you might then do the unit one second section exercises in the morning after a night's sleep, followed by the recommended walking. On soreness, your soft tissue, particularly around your sacroiliac joints, has been in a state of irritation. Any change, including beneficial changes, may make you feel that irritation more. The additional irritation is temporary and there's nothing you need to do about it other than to allow a couple of hours for it to subside. You'll find that the tendency to irritation decreases as you improve with this regimen. I'm about to give you the essential keys to getting the desired results from the two principal movements of Unit 1, Part 2, those being the standing side sway, and the movements to free hamstrings. What's important in doing these movements is where your weight goes on your feet. Here's an image that shows the sole of the foot. The human foot has not one but three arches. Two arches that go from the heels to the toes through the balls of the feet and one that goes across the balls of the feet. For our purposes, we're concerned with the arches that go from the heels to the inner balls of the feet. In the standing side sway, you want your weight to go through the medial or inner line longitudinal arch. Longitudinal means long front to back. That arch, as you can see, consists of the first three toes, the big toe and two neighboring toes. That arch is the weight-bearing arch of the foot. The outer arch is for balancing and for adjusting the feet to uneven ground surfaces. Let's go through the standing side sway. When you're doing the standing side sway, you want your weight to land each time on that inner arch. In general, the weight distribution is about two-thirds through the heel and around 25% through the inner ball of the foot, which contains the big toe and neighboring two toes. The remaining 5 to 10% goes through the outer arch, the outer two toes. You want to feel your weight go through the inner arches of your feet. As you go through the standing side sway, you'll note that there are two variations, one in a rhythm of threes and one in a rhythm of fours. And this will make sense to you once you've experienced the movement. 
my point is this, that in the rhythm of fours, where your weight lands on the foot whose knee you're about to bend, you want to have the weight evenly distributed between the two feet before you let your knee bend and that side of your pelvis sag down. I'll say that again. You want your weight to be equally distributed between your two sides before you do the knee bend that lets that side of your pelvis drop. In the movement to free hamstrings, the movements are front to back. And actually, there should be minimal or no side to side movement in that exercise. Our concern in that movement is to have the weight equally distributed between the heels and the balls of the feet. This distribution is to allow your legs to relax and stay relaxed as completely as possible as you go through the movement. The weight still goes through the inner arch containing the big toe and neighboring two toes. It's just that it's distributed between that location at the ball of the foot and the heel or heels of the feet. That's so that your legs again can stay relaxed throughout the movement because you're teaching yourself to let go of your hamstrings.